This is where you'll get your pen out. This is where you'll actually get more to work. So we're gonna actually plan on this level, that passion project and the sub goals. So under this flip chart, I've got three steps and we're gonna go over all about how to design your 12 week sprint. So today I wanna to talk to you all about my dream management system. And this is how I quarterly plan and make my 12 week sprints. So right here, I have this time funnel that you'll see, and I wanna talk about just the different delineations of time, and I have a specific planning process for each of those delineations of time. So at the very top, we have kind of our life planning. Then a level below that, we have like yearly planning, yearly goal setting. Then we have the level that we're talking about today, quarterly planning. Then we have monthly planning, weekly planning, and daily planning. So there's a specific process for each of these and a specific focus for each of these. But in general, no matter what layer you're on, whether you're monthly planning for January or you're quarterly planning for quarter three, the process is still the same. So the process is this. So because we're in the case of quarterly planning, I'll use this as an example. So the first step in planning is you focus on that layer that you're currently on, in this case, quarterly planning. So you're reviewing the previous quarter, what were your wins, really getting into that quarter. Then the next step is you go one level up, just to kind of make sure that you have top-down alignment. And then you also go one layer down to make sure that you're chunking and getting more specific and action-oriented. So that's my process for yearly planning, weekly planning, it's always the same. You start at the level you're on, then you go one up, then you go one down. Now each of these has a different focus. So for example, at the quarterly planning level, we're focusing on this sprint or this phase. For monthly planning, there's more of a focus on specific projects and routines. For weekly planning, the big focus is determining your action items for the week. And for daily planning, the biggest focus is being intentional, an intentional start. Now for the life and year levels, it's just focusing on the vision, dreaming big, getting connected emotionally to that thing. So what's so important about this funnel right here is that a lot of people think that dreaming and goal setting is just for the higher levels, life in the year. And a lot of people think that time management is just for these lower levels, like week and day. But actually time management starts at the higher levels, life and year. You get to determine how you want to manage your time and hopefully in alignment with your dreams. And also focusing on your goals should not be a one-time thing that you do at the start of the year, but that should get trickled down through this dream management funnel so that you're focusing on it every day. So under this flip chart, I've got three steps. We've got step one, step two, and step three. And we're gonna go over all about how to design your 12 week sprint. So the first step for any of the types of planning, and in this case, quarterly planning, is to review and focus on the level that you're currently on. So review the previous quarter, and I have a few questions. This is in the, this is in the quarterly planning section of the planner that I made. Um, but I just want to outline a few of the really key questions. So the first question is rapid fire. Think of everything that you've achieved in the past quarter. You know, you need some way to focus on your wins, what things really went well last quarter. The next few questions that I like to meditate on and that are in the planner that I'll kind of condense here is what type of person have I been becoming? And I like to really focus on two spheres. So the one is the sphere with myself, being intentional with myself, reflection, uh, diving deep, you know, do I really know myself? So focusing on my alone time and how have I been intentional there? When I'm alone, what type of person have I been becoming? And then also in the sphere of creating an output um, when I'm making YouTube videos or when I'm creating or when I'm in the world with people. So when I'm out in the world outputting, how has that time been intentional? So I like to really reflect on both of those two spheres. So then I like to vision and picture myself three months from now. And where do I wanna be? How do I wanna be spending a typical weekday three months from now? So I like to vision and then I like to think of what projects could get me there. And we're gonna get more specific into this project sphere especially. Then after you've done that, then we're ready to move into the next step, which is going up a level. So no matter what type of planning I'm doing, in this case, in this video, we're doing the quarterly planning, the 12 week sprint, but I always go one level up. So in this case, it's going up and looking at the yearly level. What did I plan for myself at the start of the year? So I go back and review my yearly work. So I go back and look at the start. What did I envision for myself at the start of this year? So in the case of this planner, I would go to the front and I would look at all the things I said for myself this year. So I would look at the 2023 review. I would look at the letter I wrote to myself. 
And the main thing that I would look at is this page right here. So I have this year's mountain, which is chunked up into quarterly milestones. So already at the start of the year, and I have a previous video about going through all of this, but already at the start of the year, I had ideas and vision for where I wanted to be by the end of each quarter. Now, the thing about yearly planning is that a lot can change in a year, things that you don't know happen. So you set this up, this yearly plan of where you would like to be, and you put every into you have every intention of going after that thing you put all of your work toward that thing but if unforeseen things do happen then it's good to be able to reevaluate at the quarterly level so if i wanted to be here uh, by quarter one but i've exceeded it okay well then let's adjust so when you get to quarterly planning then you can kind of adjust so at this step we go back and review where we said we wanted to be at the end of quarter one quarter two quarter three and quarter four so for example let's say like as an example for myself one quarterly goal that i had for myself was i wanted to launch this planner so by the end of like i'll just take this was my whole thing for the end of quarter four so by the end of quarter four i wanted to have the planner launched and these are the two main areas. One, you have your passion project. That is the thing that you're putting the most effort into. So when I think about like my passion project, that's related to YouTube. That's anything that could be related to YouTube. So in this case, it was having a planner launched in relation to that. Um, but then I also have these sub goals that are also very important to me. And they typically are not huge projects, but they're more like routines. So like one thing I go for myself right now is I'm completing a couch to 5K plan. Um, let's say you wanna read 12 books this year. Uh, maybe you want to host four parties and have 12 coffee dates. So if you've done the previous video with me, this would all be done already. This is just kind of catch up for people who haven't done it already. But in the previous video, we outlined our quarter benchmarks and we also outlined 24 goals for 2024. So you would keep going. This would be 24 goals. You don't have to do that many if you don't want. You can kind of experiment with what works for you. We're not going to focus on all 24 at once, but it's just where do you want to be? So all this step really would be is just a reviewing step. That's truly all it is. If you've done this work already, you theoretically, once you get to quarterly planning, you've already done yearly planning. So all you have to do is review this section. So what this does, this going up, it aligns you to the bigger vision. And that's something that we have to have at every level. Even if we were down here at daily planning, what is my plan for the week? And if at every level we've done this, then the days are informed by our, by our weeks, which are informed by our months, which are so on up the line, which is informed by our life vision. So that's how you make sure you have this vertical alignment to make sure that your days are actually aligned with your life values. So, but then we don't want only to be looking up to what the vision is. We also need to go down and we need to make it more action oriented. So that's what the going down step of the planning process is. So after you've reviewed one level up, this is where you'll get your pen out. This is where you'll actually get more to work. So we're gonna actually plan on this level, that passion project, and the sub goals. So this is where we're going down a level. So since we're doing quarterly planning, we're gonna say, okay, if I'm planning quarter one, where do I wanna be at the end of January, at the end of February, and at the end of March to make progress on this goal? So let's take my goal, for example, of wanting to have this planner launched. So let's say if my goal for the end of quarter one was I wanted to have this planner launched, then I can start thinking about these phases and these monthly project phases, okay? So maybe this month, all of March, maybe I'm planning on these videos it's kind of this video phase, launching the planner. Maybe by the end of February, that means it needs to be final edited. So I'm gonna spend all of February until I get to the end of February editing the planner. And so maybe by the end of January, I wanna have it rough drafted. So I was actually doing this quarter four, but you know, I'm just for this example, of quarter one planning. So then you have these outcomes of where you wanna be. So one thing they talk about in project management and also in the 12 week year is lead versus lag indicators. So I kinda of like to call them input and output goals because it kinda of makes sense for me. Input is the work you're going to put in. Output is the result you're going to get out of it. The input you have a lot more control over and the output you only have kind of secondary control over and it's not a direct one-to-one -one result. So for example, like if I set a subscriber goal, like I wanna have 40,000 subscribers or something, that's an output goal, that's the outcome I want. That's not directly informed by my actions. So input goals I could make are, I wanna post three videos a week, I want to create a planner. These are things that I have direct control over. So I've spent a lot of time thinking about like these input and output goals and after experimenting for myself, I'm not making output goals anymore, like subscriber goals, for example, because, because at the end of the day, it's very easy to get burnt out because there's not a one-to-one -one correlation. So that's something that as you're in this phase, I might think about input output goals. Now you can think about where you want to be, like if you had a weight loss goal, for example, the output goal might be how much you want to weigh. The input might be, 
I'm going to jog, I'm going to go to the grocery store, I'll meal plan, you know, those are your actions. So my advice is, although you can experiment and see what works for you, is I would make goals based on what your actions are going to be, not necessarily these output goals that are only somewhat related. They're like correlated to your actions, but it's not a one-to-one -one direct correlation. But I've found that I feel a lot more successful when I focus on my actions. And then I end up getting those results after I've been focusing on the actions. So now we've outlined, I've got my 12 week sprint, a quarter is 12 weeks. And I've got my rough draft phase, my editing phase, and then my video launching and promotion phase. So if you remember from the first slide when I talked about each of these layers has their own phase. And when I'm in the quarterly planning phase, I'm just defining what this 12 week sprint is going to be. Once I get down to the monthly phase, then that's when I'll outline my projects and my routines. Once I get down to the weekly phase, that's when I'm gonna get a lot more action oriented. But this is something where quarterly planning is for bird's eye view. What are we looking at right now? So now we get to the sub goal section. So on the previous step, when we reviewed our yearly work, we can go back and see, okay, these were my 24 goals for 2024. Now, I don't wanna focus on all of those at once, put all my energy into all of those things. You know, th these are really sub goals. So it's okay that not all of them are happening all the time. But what would really move the needle for me? Okay, so if I wanted, one of my yearly goals, let's say I wanted to focus on is I wanted to read 12 books this year. So that was one of my goals. I wanted to read 12 books this year, let's say. So then I can outline, I can go down to the monthly level and I can say, okay, so for January, I'm gonna read one book, February, I'm gonna read one book, and March, I'm gonna read one book. And if you wanted to, at this point, you could even select what books those are going to be. I probably would leave the specifics for as we get down a little bit closer, but some people do like to get a little bit more specific at this step. Let's say I wanted to host four parties this year. That's one of my, let's say that was one of my goals. So if I wanted to host four parties this year, that would be one per quarter. So maybe I think about, okay, so what party would I wanna host in the first few months of the year? So I might say, this is just arbitrary, but I might say, okay, maybe I want to host a murder and mystery party. Maybe I want to do that in March. So then in March, I would have the party. Maybe January, I would do the planning of it. Maybe February, I would really focus on the invites. And so then I could chunk that down even a little bit more. Maybe there's the planning phase of the party. Maybe there's the invites and supplies gathering phase of the party. And maybe there's the party and decor phase. So you kind of focus on, you know, what's a phase for each month or a project to really focus on each month to make sure it goes in the right direction. And then when you get down to monthly planning, you make that a lot more specific, a lot more granular. Do you need, by planning the murder mystery party, are you gonna write your own? Are you gonna buy your own? Or, you know, getting more specific into these things, but benchmarks for yourself. Quarterly planning is something where it's so beautiful because it's a long enough stretch of time where you can really dream big. That's a good chunk of time where you can really get something done, like a planner launch. That was a big thing to get done. But also it's a short enough amount of time that you're like, okay, I need to get to work on this thing. So like I said, time management is not just for the weekly daily level. You know, you wanna have quarterly time management, yearly time management as well as goal setting is not just for the yearly level. You know, as, as we're getting on, we'll get goals for the day and goals for the week and just making sure that there's a top-down alignment with everything that we do. And it's all folded into this one planning system where you get to create and design your life that has vertical alignment so that your dreams are getting filtered down through the delineations of time. So yeah, I'm gonna do more videos about these, still more to come on the lower levels. So yeah, I would love to plan with you throughout the year. I'm gonna be doing plan with me's, especially in January. I'm gonna get specific into the planner using the planner plan with me. So yeah, I would love to plan with you throughout the year. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.